Bishop Massa, I have to ask you first, what are you looking forward to the most after the ordination? Uh, the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Where you get to relax <laughs> exactly. and I guess you <laughs> finally get to, do you ever really right. absorb the appointment? What, what is it like between the time of disbelief after the phone call from the nuncio and these mm -hmm. days ahead of the appointment? Yeah, well there's that week of, of silence when sure. you, you cannot talk to anyone about the appointment. <clears throat> and in some ways it's a lonely time, you're alone with your thoughts, um, you're allowed to speak to a confessor or spiritual director, and um, you do a kind of review of life. Mm -hmm. You know, how is it that I arrived at this point on my life, life's journey um, when the Lord has called me to this new office? Um, but over time, for me at least, um, I felt a real peace in my heart about it. I began to, uh, to start this interview with an overview of your resume, and then I realized that would probably take about the entire five and a half minutes. Your service to the church is, is very long-standing, but it's been as an academic, as a leader, as a director. Now you have a new charge. Now you have a charge to, as Pope Francis says, go out into the peripheries and be more hands-on. Yeah. How do you make that transition? Yeah, well, I, I've always understood um, my... Uh, vocation as a teacher and uh, my academic vocation really to be in service to the pastoral life of the church. Um, I was involved many years in, in uh, teaching seminarians and participating in what they call the program of priestly formation at a number of different seminaries. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're preparing um, tomorrow's pastors mm -hmm. for the church. So I've always um, had my eye on that. Sure. Um, I had opportunities to work on weekends and sometimes during the summers uh, in parishes. But I realized this this brings it up a notch. Just a notch, sure, <laughs> sure. Bishop, we talked ahead of the interview about how ahead of your ordination, <clears throat> pardon me, a little bit more lighthearted. You know, it's kind of like a reunion. You're seeing priests that you've taught, but we cannot escape the fact that these are difficult times. Uh, yeah. in, in the last year alone, um, we've seen the Supreme Court redefine marriage. We've seen the Vatican create a church tribunal to judge bishops who fail to protect children. Yeah. Uh, Pope Francis releasing an encyclical on the environment. So much has been happening. How do you absorb this, yeah. put it together, and teach? Yeah. Well, there's, uh, there's a principle found in the letters of, of St. Paul that I think um, uh, every bishop must uh, own for <coughs> himself, and that is that we practice the truth in love, that mm -hmm. we, uh, we stand on the ground of the church's faith, its tradition, its, its moral vision, um, and we live from that and we teach from that. Um, at the same time, we have to do so with charity and deep respect for those who disagree with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of uh, disagreement within the society um, over the issues uh, that have been dealt with in the Supreme Court sure. and uh, around, uh, around our, our culture. Um, even the, and the Holy Father, in, in writing a very bold encyclical on the environment, um, has invited criticism from very faithful Catholics. Mm -hmm. Um, all of us, because he is the Pope, um, should give his, um, his reading of the, the, the environmental crisis yes. a careful attention and great respect. And he, he's challenging as, um, as he is supposed to be in his prophetic role as uh, Bishop of Rome and Supreme Pontiff. So um, I, I, see, I see many of these issues that you mm -hmm. allude to as, as a great challenge, a pastoral challenge to stand um, for Catholic truth, but to do so in a way that is respectful, deeply respectful of the other. What do you expect your first real duties will be in your new role as bishop? Have you been told? Have you talked to Bishop DiMarzio? Yeah, I, I already have, uh, I think, uh, <laughs> 10 or 12 confirmations. Uh, of course, you're going <laughs> to hit the, the ground running. <laughs> um, and uh, um, I'm, I'm open to any suggestions on how to do that. Um, I'm also, uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be installing pastors, which mm -hmm. is a great privilege, a great joy, um, a great affection for my brother priests here in, in Brooklyn. And you're part of a s tremendous brotherhood, so I'm sure you will have so many people just helping you along and being there to minister to you. Is that something that you're reaching out for and looking forward to as well? Absolutely. A, a bishop can only, um, 
exercise his ministry effectively when he is collegial, yes. you know, uh, he, and collaborative mm -hmm. in, in every aspect of his ministry. That's, it's a no-brainer today. Um, we have to, um, we're, we're co-workers sure. um, with, with other ministers, with a special role as a bishop, uh, a role not only for the local church, but also for the universal church, because you enter the College of Bishops, mm -hmm. which has the um, responsibility for care for the whole body of Christ mm -hmm. uh, throughout the world. But um, it's, a, it's a great fraternity, as sure. you suggest. Bishop Massa, it's wonderful to say that because it's well-deserved. Thank you so much for being here with us Thank today. Thank you, Liz. Thank, Thank you. you.